Hello, everyone. Today I read an informative article that was published by uh, the Fikra Forum and was written by Muhammad El Jar. And it's about some of the things that have been taking place in Libya in light of the fact that the head of the CIA, William Burns, just recently uh, visited Libya and spoke with the two opposing leaders, Abdul Hamid Debebe and Khalifa Haftar. Debebe is the leader of the political faction in Libya that is being backed by Turkey and it's stationed in Tripoli, which is in Western Libya. And the faction that is being led by, uh, by uh, Khalifa Haftar is being backed by Russia. So there is a proxy war that is taking place in Libya between Russia and Turkey. And Turkey is supporting Islamist terrorist groups in Libya as a way to advance its own hegemony in that very much so war-torn country. So I want to read to you guys some excerpts from this article because it talks about Turkey leading terrorist groups in Western Libya. And it says here in one part of the article, the areas west of Tripoli in particular have witnessed an increase in the footprint of extremist groups, especially in Janzur and the cities of Zawiya and Sabrafa. The situation is made worse by Turkey and its Islamist proxies in western Libya, which seek to redefine the security landscape in ways that can entrench Turkey's military presence in Libya. So Russia and Turkey are in a struggle over control of Libya. And Turkey wants to control Libya. Turkey wants to control uh, uh, Armenia. And it's working toward this goal. It's working toward this goal of controlling Armenia by supporting and backing Azerbaijan against Armenia. And this is why last year, Azeri troops literally invaded Armenia and the United States did nothing about it. NATO did nothing about it. Why? Because Azerbaijan is Turkey's chained dog. Turkey controls Azerbaijan. Whatever Azerbaijan does, it is doing so in the capacity of Turkey's proxy. The United States knows this. NATO knows this. But Turkey is so geostrategically important for NATO because Turkey controls the Straits into the Black Sea and into the Mediterranean. And so as long as Turkey controls the Straits, Turkey is going to be very pertinent for NATO and NATO is going to want Turkey in its alliance because NATO wants to use Turkey to block Russia's uh, uh, entry through the Straits. Bottom line. And as long as Turkey is anti-Russia, as long as Turkey has animosity towards Russia, NATO will allow Turkey to basically do what it wants to do. And if that means killing Armenians, so be it. If that means backing an invasion of Armenia, so be it. America doesn't care. 
because America wants to control the Straits through Turkey, through its proxy Turkey. And here we have Turkey supporting terrorists in Libya, in Western Libya, because Turkey wants to control Libya. And it really goes to show how much NATO devastated that country. And this is why I, I just, I, I can't help but laugh when I hear people talking about how much they support the toppling of Bashar al-Assad. How much they support the rebel cause against Assad. Because Assad is supposedly so bad. He's so bad because he's fighting to maintain control over his own country? I mean, Bashar al-Assad ruled over Syria for 10 years and there was no war in that decade. And then in, in the last 10 years, there has been this seemingly endless war in Syria. Why? It's not because of Bashar al-Assad. It's because of all of the rebel psychopaths that NATO has been backing for the last past decade. And these rebels are trying to topple Bashar al-Assad because Assad is an Alawite. So it's some crazy sectarian antagonism that has been here on this globe for God knows how long, for centuries, and all of a sudden, it's a great cause. And we, we have seen how NATO has devastated Middle Eastern countries. We saw what happened as a result of the toppling of Saddam Hussein. What did we see? We have seen the rise of Iran because of the toppling of Saddam Hussein. And we have seen terrorists rip that country apart. I don't have to give you some in-depth explanation about what that looks like. We all saw that. I don't have to be some professor of geopolitics to understand that removing Saddam Hussein was a bad idea. We saw ISIS. We saw ISIS. We saw some guy getting burned alive in a cage. That wasn't done by Assad. That was done by the people who want to remove and kill Assad and rape and kill his wife. We saw the devastation of Libya. We saw the video of Gaddafi literally being sodomized by the peace-loving, democracy-loving rebels that the United States backed. And amazingly, and this is what I find so hypocritical about the West, America talks nonstop about racism. I have been hearing about slavery and racism since I was in kindergarten. I grew up watching Nickelodeon, and every year we had to hear about racism in Nickelodeon. I grew up watching Proud Family. Now, Proud Family wasn't that bad in those days. We're talking early 2000s here. But I recently watched the, the updated Proud Family, which is being broadcasted today, and there's all sorts of weird, woke SJW crap that they are promulgating through that show. We talk endlessly about racism. Gaddafi was against racism. He knew that there was some very intense racism in Libya against sub-Saharan Africans, against black Africans. And he worked to prevent violence against black Africans. And there has been tremendous violence against sub-Saharan Africans in Libya. Once he was removed, all of a sudden you saw videos of blacks in cages. That was the result of removing Gaddafi. Yet in America, we talk about slavery as if it happened yesterday. And slavery happened right before our eyes, literally blacks in cages, as a result of Gaddafi being removed. And we celebrated that. 
we celebrated the toppling of that political leader, and we saw Hillary Clinton laughing about it. I don't want to hear about racism in America anymore. That's it. It's sickening. Police officers do their job. All of a sudden, it's racism. But you can remove uh, uh, a dictator who's, who was preventing literal slavery, and that's good. I, I don't want to hear about racism in America anymore. It's bullshit. Here's another excerpt from this article. On the ground, the Tripoli area of Janzur and the cities of Zawiya and Sabratha are witnessing increased influence from extremist groups led by Shaban Hadiya and Mahmoud bin Rajab, both close allies of Turkey. Very interesting. You have two terrorist leaders, Shaban Hadiya and Mahmoud bin Rajab, both backed by Turkey in Libya. Isn't that interesting? Same thing happened in Syria. We backed uh, the FSA, the Free Syrian Army. It was full of Islamists. It was being backed by Turkey. And people who support the, the revolution against Assad, they may not realize this, but what they're actually supporting is simply Turkey's proxy war to control Syria. And if Bashar al-Assad gets removed and Russia doesn't make sure that someone is there to replace them, someone that can just continue on uh, basically what Assad did and, and basically advancing Russia's interests in Syria, Turkey will take over Syria. And that's why you, you see Turkey in southeastern uh, Syria. That's why you see them parking their soldiers in Syria. Why? Because they literally want to take over that country. It's not just about fighting Kurdish uh, terrorists. It's about controlling Syria. <clears throat> Here's another excerpt from this article. The threat of jihadist groups in Libya was reduced significantly after 2017, but began to reemerge during and after the 2019 Tripoli War, establishing and consolidating Turkey's military footprint in Libya. So there you go. We saw a decline in jihadist groups in Libya after 2017, but we saw their reemergence in 2019. And these, this emergence was basically advancing Turkey's military footprint in Libya. So the terrorists in Western Libya are there to advance Turkey's interest. Same thing with the FSA in Syria. And it's quite amazing. I mean, last year we heard about Azerbaijan invading Armenia. Azerbaijan is the biggest proxy of Turkey. And the United States is allowing Turkey to advance itself. Why? Because Turkey is the United States' biggest proxy against Russia. Turkey for a very, very long time. Turkey, for a very, very long time, has been a proxy of the U.S. against Russia. And you can go all the way back to the Cold War, and you will see that Turkey was being armed to the teeth by the United States. And we are going to be seeing in the future Turkey advancing itself tremendously, um, taking over Libya, or working very tenaciously to do so, working very violently to take over Syria, we're going to be seeing it. We're already seeing it. And NATO will just allow it. You will see more Armenians being slaughtered because Turkey wants to resume where it left off in the Armenian genocide. And the United States will support it by allowing it and not doing a damn thing. Why? Because Turkey is America's stronghold in the Mediterranean against Russia. That's it. That's the bottom line. Anyway, that's what I have to say tonight. You guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.